Hello and welcome to today's live session, the first live session of this online training. Uh, I'm Rajat Sen Gupta. With me, we have Kiran Pandey here. So uh, before we get started, uh, I'll just quickly take you through uh, the course structure. Uh, so I'll just share my screen. And uh, so if you have, you must have received the uh, online username password. So basically what we have right now is uh, there are four um, modules that are there. And the four modules uh, we will be, so in that four modules, what we will be going through is the first would be the theory part of uh, the training. Uh, then subsequently, what we will also be talking about in the theory part is uh, we will be talking about what or how you can source data, good quality data, uh, and then how do we turn it into different ways in which you can communicate with it. So these are the two things that we will be talking about. One second. Uh, I'll just one second. I'll just again share my screen. Yeah, so we can see the screen over here. So, so these are the four modules that we have. Uh, so we have got module one, which is already live. Uh, it, it it talks about uh, SDGs. It talks about state of environment. It also tells you briefly about uh, the ideas with which Center for Science and Environment operates. So this would be all theory. Uh, then in module two, we'll get into something more concrete in terms of uh, how to find the right kind of environmental data. So we'll be talking about how to source data, what are the good sources, what are the bad sources, what is the good quality of data. Uh, then in module three, we will be talking about how to process the raw data that you've collected. And when I say process and anal analyze it, I broadly believe um, what I mean is analyzing it for communication. So this is not uh, primary research or, or it is not uh, an analysis for a, for a paper or so. It is just for communicating. So what kind of information is critical to have maximum impact with your target audience? It can be uh, people within the organization. It can be people outside your organization. It can be your boss. It can be people that you that you work with on a daily, daily basis, the communities that you work with. So basically, how to communicate complex scientific data, which usually is a challenge when you're dealing with climate change and, and the science behind it and how to communicate it effectively. That is basically what we will be dealing with in module three. And in module four, what we will do is, based on the analysis that we've done in terms of what is it that we want to give out, we will create data visualizations and we will create uh, maps, interactive maps and dashboards. So the modules will have small uh, videos in there. Uh, which will be dealing with the theory part of it in terms of where to use a graph, where to use a chart, where to use a map, when to use uh, all three of them together, when not to use them. So the theory part of, it, of why we will be choosing different visuals and what kind of content goes along with it in terms of text. Whereas the live session, there'll be three live sessions. Uh, the three live sessions will talk about, so there are two uh, software that we'll be dealing with over here. Well, first is uh, Microsoft Power BI. Uh, so the live sessions will only be dealing with the softwares. Uh, the reason being that learning a new software usually takes time because bulk of the time would go into understanding where is this button, where is the file button, where is the publish button, where is the analysis button. So that is the only reason why we have the live sessions around the two. So basically we'll be teaching uh, or we'll be touching upon Microsoft Power BI. We'll be touching about Microsoft Power BI enough for you to get into an advanced level. So we will not be touching at the advanced level. We'll be talking about the basics, which would help you create interactive dashboards using Power BI. Also, we will be teaching another uh, tool called Data Wrapper. Data Wrapper is an extremely powerful tool. Uh, so we will also be touching upon that in the third live session. So in the first live session and in the second live session, we will be dealing with Microsoft Power BI which is basically a dashboard. A dashboard, very simply put, basically means that normally when we look, think of Excel, we create one visual at a time. So we can have a bar, then a separate chart, a separate table, a separate graph. In a dashboard, you can basically get all of those different units into one place. 
and you can basically create a correlation between them. So when I want to look at India information, I can uh, the pie, the chart, the graph would also change accordingly. So in the first session, we'll be talking about how to prep the data, which if you look at your modules, it is basically module three. So we'll be starting with module three in the live session. And then in the next live session, we'll be talking about how to create visuals with it. And then finally, we'll also in the third live session talk about a tool called Data Wrapper uh, because it is excessively easy to use and it is wonderful for creating maps, uh, interactive maps, district level maps. If you want to create, you can create district level maps in a minute, in a few minutes. So that is the power of that and it would all be interactive. I'll just quickly take you through uh, what I mean when we talk about uh, dashboards. So there are three Excel sheets that would have already been uh, shared by uh, uh, Susan uh, that all of you would have access to. Based on the three Excel sheets, you don't have to go back and look at it right now. So we'll be looking at the three Excel sheets uh, individually. I have created a dashboard, which is like this, which basically, if you look at it, I'll just quickly take you through. So we have a headline. Uh, the headline is over here. And what the story that I'm trying to tell is that uh, the story of historical emissions, which basically talks about how developed countries at one point in time in 1980s, 90s, were responsible, not in 1980s, in 18th century and, and the early 19th century, were responsible for bulk of the carbon dioxide that has been emitted in the, in, in the world uh, today. And that is one of the reasons why we are facing climate change right now. So what we are saying, and this is a stance that uh, most developing countries usually take, what we say is that the developed countries should take the responsibility of cleaning up their act. And they should also help the developing countries transition okay. to cleaner energy. Uh, can, can I share so something? What we have over here is, uh, and this is basically how uh, dashboards work. So you have um, uh, a region to choose. So if I, so there are these three. Uh, hi, we cannot see the dashboard. Yeah, yeah. If I want to see just the Africa information, I can just click on the Africa information. And if you see uh, all the visuals uh, that are over here, they change accordingly. You don't have to worry about what these visuals are right now. But this Hello? is basically how a Hello? dashboard looks like. So Hello? if you just follow the live sessions, uh, you should be able to create a dashboard like this by the end of uh, the training. Uh, can so you hear? Can you can you hear us? Share the web link as well if you want to have a look. Sir, at excuse it. me, uh, sir. Kiran, uh, sir, excuse me. Your slides are not moving. Hello. See chat over here. Sir, our slides are ideal. So this is the yeah. web link. And the beauty of this is that you can basically share this web link with uh, people. So you can email it to people. You can embed it onto your website. You can also take static visuals out of it. And Hello, Mr. Sangupta. Hello. Videos. So Hello. Uh, so that is the convenience of, 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 of Hello, uh, Rajit Sangupta. using uh, a dashboard. Hello, sir. So now, uh, with, uh, at the end of the training, what you would also this be... Is like the government, <laughs> the Hello, can you, can you hear us? Uh, can you just stop sharing? And put it once. Can you hear us? So at the end of the training, what you were expected to do... So Can you hear us? Uh, can you hear us? Small... Can you, uh, can you hear us? Which would be based on the content that you have gone through in the module. So you have to answer those. And also at the end of the training, you would, are also expected to submit uh, a dashboard. Uh, they can't see the dashboard, can you? They can't see the dashboard right yes. now, thank you. Yes, Nirvala, I also. Uh, uh, one second, I'll just do that, one second. Actually, what happened, uh, uh, Raj, is it Rajit, right? So this is how the dashboard looks. Uh, are you able to see it now? Yeah, I think they will. We are able to see you, yeah. but we Is we it can't... visible now? Uh, Rajit? Can, can you hear us or hear me? So this is how the dashboard looks. Uh, and I think it is. Yeah, it is. That's it. So this is the dashboard, how it looks right now. And uh, so what you can do is you can click on in Africa and you get details about Africa. If you want to see Africa and Australia, you've got details about both the two places. So this is how a dashboard usually looks like. And this is basically if, if we follow just the live sessions, we should be able to create a dashboard like this. Uh, so what you are expected at the end of the uh, uh, of the training is to create a dashboard like this. Yeah, I think Nirmalaya, you have a question. Can yeah, you, you hear us? Unmute and you can ask. I'm unmuted, but can you hear us? One second, Nirmalaya. Uh, can you possibly type it out? I think there is. There's a lot of messages in the chat. 
Nirmala, you are on mute right now, I think. Oh, no, I, I think there's... Any possibility type it out, Nirmala, if it is possible for you? I can see you visually, but I can't hear you. Uh, Nir we can, I can hear Nirmala. Nirmala, you can go ahead, but need to check. I mean, Nirmala, you, you are perfectly audible for us. Yeah, can you possibly type it? Huh? So we will be sharing the the the, the dashboard, uh, the the, train, uh, the the video with everyone over here. So you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I'll just wait for a second here. Okay. Yeah, please go. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so what we were talking about is that what you will need to do at the end of uh, the training. So you have to create a dashboard like this, ideally with your own data sets, uh, which is what is preferred, or you can just follow what we're showing in the live sessions uh, to get a hand of how to use Power BI. So that is what is expected of you at the end of the day. So let's get started with today's live session. And I'll just, so in today's live session, we will be looking at uh, how to prep data and the first basic concept, which uh, is extremely important, and it took me a while to understand. So depend, it does not matter what uh, kind of uh, data you're dealing with or what kind of software you're dealing with. Is yeah, does not matter what kind of software you're dealing with. There's a concept called data integrity. This is beyond uh, Power BI or Tableau or anything else that you would possibly be using. So data integrity basically talks about. Uh, there's a concept of good data and bad data. Uh, so it took me a while to understand this. So I'll quickly take you through. And this is, I think, a very important concept. So there is something called an unstructured data set. Uh, this is an example of an unstructured data set. What the data is talking about is not that important. What is important is the way the data set has been structured right now. So if you look at it, uh, second. Uh, is there any problem with the way we are going about right now? Uh, Nirmalaya has written that he is not able to understand what is happening. Yeah. Am I audible? Is everything making sense right now? It, it would be better if you uh, write it down because uh, I... Yes. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm not able to hear you people, but is, am I audible? And are you able to follow what I'm saying right now? Or do you want me to go slow? Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So in the intro, I'll, I'll start from, from scratch again. I'll quickly, quickly uh, go through the scratch, uh, the start again. So what I started off with uh, was, uh, I was talking about the structure of the training that we have. So there are four modules that exist in, uh, in, in the training. Uh, the first module will talk about SDGs, will talk about the theory and will also help you understand uh, the CAC stance and it will help you understand the basic concept of climate change and, 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 and the science behind it. Then followed by that, the second, third, and fourth uh, modules, which will open uh, with time. The second module will talk about uh, the, uh, will talk about how to source data. Uh, so the second module will talk about how to source data. And the third module is basically, once you have sourced the data, how can you analyze the data? And the analysis would be uh, on the basis of uh, how to make it interact, uh, how to uh, communicate it effectively with your audiences. So in that, uh, what we uh, will create is in the final uh, module, we'll touch upon that, is we will teach you how to create a dashboard <coughs> like this. So this is the dashboard that we will be creating uh, in the live sessions. So the modules will also have the theory part of this, uh, basically where we will be talking about what kind of visuals to pick up, how much data is too much data, how little data you should go with, how to structure your statements, how to write uh, about the data-driven stories. So the theory part would be there in the module through different videos. And the live sessions, we will be talking about two softwares. So one is Power BI, Microsoft Power BI. And the second is a software called uh, uh, Data Wrapper. So in the first two live sessions, first one is right now underway, and there'll be the second one that will happen uh, in a couple of days. 
we will be talking only about Microsoft Power BI, which is a dashboard, is a, is a BI software, business intelligence software, through which you can create dashboards like this. So this is basically an interactive dashboard uh, based on the three Excel sheets that have been shared with you at the uh, before the uh, the start of today's live session by Susan. So this is basically an interactive dashboard and end users uh, can actually interact with this data and they can call out the portions that are relevant to them. In the last live session, what we will be talking about is another software or another tool called Data Wrapper. It is much more easy to use than Power BI, and it is also extremely effective for creating maps, for creating interactive tables. So if you want to create a district level map, so there are 700 different districts in India. So if you want to create a district level map, if you have the raw data, it takes not even, it takes around five to 10 minutes to create that uh, interactive map on Data Wrapper. So we will be touching upon that. So in this training, what we will be touching upon is we will be touching upon the theory that that in, in terms of how to communicate effectively data pertaining to climate change and, 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 and the scientific data that you would be dealing with. Along with that, we will be teaching you two uh, softwares. One is Microsoft Power BI. The other is Data Wrapper. The reason why we are going in for two softwares is basically because everybody has a different requirement. If you have the requirement for a software like Power BI, then you should definitely learn it. Otherwise, for most of the people, I think even data wrapper would suffice. So depending on what uh, it is that you need, you can basically uh, pick and choose. At the end of the training, all of you are expected to submit a project work, which can either be what we are, we are covering in the live sessions, or it can be a data set that you use at your workplace, and you can use that data set to create uh, something as well. Yeah, but am I audible now? Am I? Uh, I have done it uh, because there are two uh, speakers over here. So otherwise, it becomes very difficult uh, to manage. Uh, one second, if you really want, uh, so. Is it audible now? Hello. Hello. Hi, Rajit. You are audible. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Am I? Is it better now? You you are audible, Rajit, but the session is completely one way session. It should be ideally the interactive, like like you can't hear us uh, because uh, you your pace is very fast, and uh, uh, most of the I mean the our colleague are joining uh, maybe quite a uh, late five minutes or two minutes, so completely they are not able to understand. Yeah, so am I audible now? Uh, I I go a little slow. I can hear you now as well. Yeah, now you can go ahead. Thanks, thanks, Arun. Yeah, I can hear you all of that now. Yeah, perfect. So what I was talking about is now we are in the first live session, we'll be talking about how to prep data. So one of the basic concepts when you're dealing with data is to understand the concept of data integrity. So data integrity is the, so I don't know whether it has happened to you. So when I started off with my journey of data driven uh, communication, there would be times when a data set that I would get from, let's say, government source, I would be able to create graphs around it and it would read perfectly fine. But there would also be times when I would try to create a graph or the chart or the table and everything would be all muddled up. So the, the, the accesses would be all over the place. And for some reason, it would not really work out. So the reason behind that was basically the way the data was structured. So when I talk about a good data set or a bad data set, it basically means how the data set has been structured. So that concept is, so there are two kinds of uh, structures uh, that are popularly, uh, popularly available. The first is called an unstructured data set. Uh, this is an example of that. This is the cancer registry of India. So different cities within India, how many cancer cases have been reported over there? And there is also a breakup of male, female, and total for two different years, 2009 to 11 and 2012 to 16. The numbers are not important. What is important is the way it is structured right now. So this is a classic example of an unstructured data set. It is human friendly. So for if I were to ask you, can you tell me where the, date, the Delhi numbers are or where the Mumbai numbers are, you can easily tell me that. So unstructured data set is good for human, uh, uh, human consumption. However, it is very bad for 
uh, any software, be it Microsoft Power BI, be it there are other softwares like Tableau, even Excel to some extent struggles with it. So for any software that you're dealing with, where you're dealing with a big chunk of data, which basically is what we are, uh, we, uh, you should be able to be comfortable with uh, at the end of the training as well. So if it is an unstructured data set, the first logical step is to convert it into a structured data set. So if this data set where you can see, so why is it an unstructured data set? I'll tell you that. For human brain, it makes sense. But if I were to ask you, uh, where do I find the data for 2009 to 11? Uh, your answer would be uh, that it is across three, uh, three columns, C, which is the male data, D, which is the female data, and E, which is basically the total of the male and the female. Similarly, if I were to ask you, where will I find the male data? Uh, the same thing you would say that the male data is available in column C for 2009 and 11 and column G for 2012 and 16. For human brain, it makes absolute sense, but for a computer, it becomes very complicated because there are three. So all computer softwares, they work row-wise, uh, sorry, they work column-wise and each of the columns should only have one kind of data. So if I were to convert this into a structured data set, uh, I'll just zoom in again. It's the same data set that we saw a little bit, uh, a little bit fine. Uh, so if you look at it now, if I were to ask the same question again, uh, where will I find the cancer cases? Now the answer is the cancer cases are available only in the F column, all the cancer cases. Where will I find the years? The years are available in column A. Where will I find the gender? It is basically male. After this, there will be female entries, and then there would be male and female entries for the subsequent uh, year. Uh, so basically, this is how a structured data set looks like. A classic example of a structured data set is basically if you ever visit an office, and at the secure the security office, uh, the security guard over there will help you fill up a register. So if you think of just try to visualize the register over there, uh, the register would have the first column would be name, the second column would be who you want to meet. The third column would be at what time you are coming in, the purpose for your meeting, your phone number, and at what time you're leaving. So that is a classic example of a structured data set. So each of the individual column only has one kind of data, as opposed to what we saw initially over here. Uh, years are split over C, D, E, G, H, I. Gender is split over column C and column G. So this becomes a problem. So whenever you have this kind of data set, so this is your end result. This is basically you are taking a lot of data set and you're compiling it into a table which is human friendly. So this would be your end result. However, for analysis, any form of analysis, this is a bad structured, uh, it is an unstructured data set or a bad kind of structuring of a data set to, start, to begin with. So we will talk about how to convert an unstructured data set into a structured data set as well. Uh, so another example of this is also over here. If you look at it, this is the COVID-19 data that uh, that WHO used to come up with during the COVID, uh, during the pandemic years. So if you look at it uh, in column A, you have got the date. Column B talks about the country code. Column C talks about the country. Then the new cases come up over here. The cumulative cases, the new deaths, and the cumulative deaths. So basically, this is how the structuring has been done. So whenever you have an unstructured data set, your first step should be to convert it into a structured data set. One of the reasons why you might or might not have experienced it uh, while you're dealing with uh, small data sets in Excel is because sometimes when you have only one kind of data, let's say I only had number of cases or I only had data for only one year and the total, then it does not matter what kind of structured or unstructured data set you're dealing with. So it basically by default becomes a, a, a structured data set because the data set is small. So uh, a structured data set is a logical flow. Uh, it is excellent for computational analysis. It is machine friendly. It allows us to uh, make uh, unstructured data, uh, allows us to make unstructured data or human friendly data. So it helps us create tables which are human friendly. And it is usually, it is easy to keep things uh, granular data. So it does not matter how much data you have, it is much more easy to keep it uh, if you have a structured data set. Because if you look at it, uh, uh, the first one that we looked at, uh, over here the same data set is spread across column A, and it goes till about I. So it is much more bulky. 
as opposed to the same data set but converted into a structured data set, it basically starts from column A and it goes till about F. So filtering becomes more easy, uh, finding different kinds of uh, levels of analysis becomes much more easy because it is much more compact in, in, in a way. So this is one uh, basic idea that you should remember when you're dealing, when you're looking at data and you, when you're looking at data for analysis. Uh, I'll just stop it over here. Any questions pertaining to structured and unstructured data? We'll talk about how to convert an unstructured data into structured data as well in today's session itself. Any questions about this? Otherwise, I'll move on to the next uh, presentation. So I'll get started with the next presentation. So one of the tools that we'll be teaching is uh, called a tool called Microsoft Power BI. It is BI stands for Business Intelligence Tool. Uh, there are many other BI softwares available in the market as well. If you are already well versed with any other BI software, then I don't see a reason for you to learn this because they are all very similar. Uh, there are so because uh, so. Uh, so what a BI software basically does, and this is very important, why, uh, so why BI is better than Excel in a lot of ways, is that BI allows you to get data from different sources. Excel being just one of the data sources, you can take data, so let's say you've seen a, a table on the website. You can take that table from the website, then you found another table that is there in a PDF that you've come across, you can pull it from there as well. So different kinds of data sets, you can basically put it inside a uh, BI software. And then you can create a model around them. A uh, model basically means that you're creating a, a correlation amongst themselves. Then after that, you can create visualizations the way we just looked at. And then finally, you can share uh, it either uh, you can create PDFs or images, or you can create a unique URL, which you can either share it through email, or you can share it, or you can embed it onto your website as well. So you can also share it. Uh, so I just give you another example for you to understand what, what it means. Let's think about, uh, let's think about an organization and where it keeps data. So if we talk about Rajat Sengupta, so Rajat Sengupta's, uh, let's say, uh, financial details, how much money he earns every month in the organization, that let's say exists with uh, with uh, the accounts team. So the accounts team has an Excel sheet which has information of Rajit Sengupta, Kiran Pandya and all the other people who work in CSA. Then let's say what kind of, how frequently or how disciplined Rajit is in terms of does he come regularly to office, does he not? So there's another Excel sheet that exists with the HR team. So there are two different Excel sheets right now. One is with the accounts team, one is with the HR team. What kind of performance Rajat uh, has been able to achieve? Is he uh, a good performer or a bad performer? Is he meeting his targets? That would exist with, let's say, my boss. So my boss also has an Excel sheet where he or she ticks, okay, this is what Rajat had to do in this week or this month, and he has done it. So basically, another Excel sheet has been created over there. And then let's say, let's talk about uh, the personal details, where he stays, whether he's married or not, uh, how many how many kilometers he travels every day, all of those information is again available with, the, let's say, HR department. So if I want to understand what kind of individual, or if I want to create a dashboard of my employees, with Rajat Sengupta as a, uh, one of the employees, I would ideally have to look at four different data sets. They can be four different Excel sheets, they can be in any other format as well. But effectively, to get a holistic picture of what Rajat Sengupta is or whether his performance is good, whether he should be given a raise, whether he is a disciplined worker, you would need information from all the four places because how much money Rajat is getting decides what kind of pay grade he is in or whether he should be given more raise or less raise, whether he is meeting the targets which is coming from his boss's Excel sheet, decides whether he should be getting a raise or not, whether he is traveling a long distance or not, whether he has been with the organization for a very long or not, that also has an impact on whether he should be getting a raise or not. So basically different kinds of data sets can be brought in. When I talk about modeling, model basically means that Rajat Sengupta would have a unique employee code, that would be the model or that would be the entry on the basis of which the different data sets are basically tied together. So you're pulling out the data, uh, the Rajat uh, Sengupta's information from all of these individual Excel sheets. And then finally, 
You can create any kind of visualization that you want to create uh, around it. You can have a bar chart, a graph chart, a table, or any other, or multiple visualizations as well. And finally, you can actually create, uh, you can share it. So you can create a PDF or an image or anything else that you want to do uh, along with it. So this is the power of BIE tool. Microsoft Power BI also allows you to do that. So it does not matter what format your data is in. It can be a PDF, it can be an Excel, it can be in an SQL format, it can be there on a website. You can basically pull those things from different places and get them at one place for you to analyze it. Because all of those individual data sets would be giving you a different insight into what you want to talk about. So earlier, what you would have traditionally done is you would manually pull those individual data sets or data entries from there and copy paste it into one Excel and work with it. In a BI software, you don't really have to worry. And the final and the most important reason why I personally prefer a BI software over Excel is that tomorrow, let's say we have created a dashboard of Rajit in 2024 or in 2023 with all of these information. So as and when the raw data is updated, so every month my boss is updating the data set, Every year, my uh, account team is also updating the data set. So once the dashboard is created, I don't have to recreate it. All I have to do is there is a small button called refresh. You click on the refresh button, the new entries that have been added, they just come into the dashboard in one go. So you do not have to recreate the model over the, the dashboard over and over again, even if you want to create it once every year. So it's not like one year later, you again start from scratch. So that is one big convenience of a, soft, of a BI software. You Once you've created the broad framework, all you need to do is update the data set. So uh, Microsoft Power BI uh, is a BI such as a BI tool. Uh, there are three components of Power BI. Uh, there's something called Microsoft Power BI Desktop. So there are the, these three components that exist. Uh, one is called the, this is the one, Power BI Desktop. This is what we will be installing onto our computer. This is the software on which we create the dashboard. Beyond that, we also have Power BI for mobile. This is only and only for viewing if you want to view it on your mobile phone. This is an optimized software that is available either on apps, uh, on Android App Store or on, 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 on Apple App Store. So this is just for mobile. So you don't really need to uh, get hold of this. And the third is something called powerbi.com. This is a website. So basically the step is, the first step is that you create the dashboard. So for creating the dashboard, you come to... Sir, you are muted. Rajiji, you are muted. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one second. Yeah. So once we created the dashboard, then we will publish it on MicrosoftPowerBI.com. So it is the website in which, like you create a Gmail account, you will also create a PowerBI.com account. And over there, once you publish it, you can share it with your uh, within your organization and in an email, or you can embed it again and do all the other things that you want to do. Uh, so there are now uh, I, there are two caveats with Microsoft Power BI or two limitations for Microsoft Power BI that you should know. First is the fact that because it's a Microsoft product, it only and only natively works in a Windows laptop or a desktop. So you would need a Windows laptop or a desktop to run Microsoft Power BI. Uh, it would not run on an Apple uh, uh, laptop. It would not run on a Linux laptop or a desktop. So you need a Microsoft uh, or, or a Windows laptop or a desktop to run it. Uh, if you want to run it on Apple, I, there are videos available. So you have to install a, a, a software called, uh, uh, 
I've forgotten the name of I'll put the link uh, on uh, of that as well. So it's a software that you have to install onto your computer. After that, you can run Windows applications on Apple products as well. However, the, the problem is that that software is not a free software. So you will have to invest in that. So right now, whatever in this training we will be touching upon, they would all be free to use or the free components. So Microsoft Power BI also has a paid version and a free version. We will only be talking about the free version because in our understanding, free version is good enough. Uh, however, within the organization, if you want to go for a paid version eventually, you can actually upgrade to that as well. So, so uh, that is the first problem that you would face if you need a Windows uh, laptop or a desktop. And the second limitation is that Microsoft Power BI, to be able to create a, 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 an ID within Microsoft Power BI, you need an official email ID. So for me, that is Rajit Agarit, csinindia.org. So it can't be a Gmail or an Outlook or a, or, a, or a Yahoo account. You need an official email ID to create the ID on pabe.com. So basically what it means is you can create the dashboard, but you will not be able to publish it online. So for that, you need a, 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 an, an official email ID. It can be any official email ID, any organizational email ID would work over here, but you need an official email ID to be able to use it. Uh, having said that, uh, let's move on uh, to Microsoft Power BI. Uh, before we do, uh, in fact, we can do that right away. In fact, so how do we install Microsoft Power BI? Uh, is you go to your marketplace. So in your Windows, you will have a marketplace. Microsoft Store is what it is called. So when you go to Microsoft Store, and um, it opens up. In Microsoft Store, you have to search for Power BI Desktop. You would also get the mobile version over here. You might get other Microsoft uh, plugins as well. You have to install Microsoft Power BI Desktop once. So you just click on search and you click on Power BI. And it takes you to Power BI Desktop. So I have already installed it onto my computer because it takes a little while. Uh, however, once you come up over here, you just have the, you'll have the install option. Uh, let's just wait for it to load. You just have to install it for the first time. And then subsequently, the way you would, so it is written open over here. You can see that it is written open in my case. In your case, it will say install. And it also, there is also an update that is available right now. I will not update it right now, but you can also update it eventually. So once you've installed it, the way you open Word or any other software on your computer, you will come up over here and you will have the Power BI option uh, over here. Yeah. Over here, you have the Power BI option that is over here. So when you click on Power BI, what happens is it opens up. So this is how Microsoft Power BI looks. So for the first time, you might get a, a welcome message as well and some tutorial along with it. But this is how Microsoft Power BI looks. Uh, so we would want a new report. I'm just clicking on the new report. And this is how the interface looks. We will go through each and every component slowly and steadily. Uh, what we need to understand, this is how the interface looks. There are three uh, important tabs that exist over here. Uh, the first is you can see this dotted line that is over here. This is basically the canvas. This is basically the place where you will be creating the visual. So right now the dashboard would be a rectangle shape because this is the way it is. You can make it any shape you want. You can make it into a square. You can make it into an A4 size, a landscape, or a, or, 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 or a portrait mode. So you can change this the, the, the size of your dotted line. And it would be dependent on where you want to eventually publish the dashboard. So if it is basically uh, a dashboard that you, or, 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 or a visual that you're creating for uh, a specific place on your website, then you can ask your web developer to give you the exact dimension that this pixel, this first pixel, uh, and this first pixel, pixel, you can actually create it and customize it accordingly. By default, this is the sign. A size that comes 16 to 9 ratio is basically what it comes in. Beyond that, uh, there are these three tabs over here. Uh, first is called the report tab where we are right now. This is basically where you create the visuals. This is where you create the visuals. This is, if you look at it, this is the Excel kind of a tab. This is basically where you see the raw data. And finally, this is the relations on the model tab. So if you have multiple data sets that you have imported, you can create relationship over here. You would not spend too much time over here because usually Microsoft Power BI creates a relationship on its own. There would be times when it is not able to create it. If that happens, then you have to 
manually come up over here and, and, and create the relationship properly. So these are the three places uh, where you will be toggling. So this is called the report view, this is called the table view, and this is called the model view. And, uh, and, but, and over here, you, you've got the canvas, and then uh, over here, this is also important. This is the visualization tab. We'll not be getting too much into too much details right now because in the next slide session, we'll be doing, dealing with the visualization. But these are the popularly available visuals. Most of them are self-explanatory if you look at it. Uh, so you've got different kinds of uh, visuals that you can create. And finally, you've got the data tab. So once you've been, uh, imported data, you can see the data over here to create the visuals. I'll just stop over here and I'll quickly jump on to the three Excel sheets that we had. Uh, so I just, so that we know what Excel, what we are dealing with. So there are three Excel sheets that were shared with you at the beginning. Uh, these are the three Excel sheets that have, that will be used to create the visualization or the dashboard that we'll be doing over the next, this slide session and the next one as well. The first is this Excel sheet. You don't have to open it if you don't have it already. Uh, so this is basically, so we are looking at the greenhouse gas emissions of these different regions, Africa, Australia, Eastern Asia, Eastern Europe, Europe in total, aviation and shipping and the other places as well. So these are the regions, uh, the data exists for them. And these are the year on year greenhouse gas emissions that have happened. These are the annual greenhouse gas emissions in billion metric tons, carbon, to, uh, carbon dioxide equivalent. CO2E, and these are for the different years. Uh, so this is the first data set that we'll be dealing with. Can anybody tell me whether this is a structured or an unstructured data set the way it exists right now? Uh, you can just type it or you can just uh, say, is this a structured or an unstructured data set right now? Unstructured. This is an unstructured data set. Uh, anybody else who wants to pitch in or things otherwise? I, I think it's structured enough because uh, the objective is to have data per year. So we have X and Y axis uh, uh, headings are anyway telling us what the data is about. So that's my my view. Perfect. Thanks, thanks, Nirmalaya. Uh, so uh, the right answer is that this is an unstructured data set. Uh, this is a quasi-structured kind of a data set if you really want to put it this way. Uh, so what we will need to do is we will need to, so this is the example of the same data set in a structured uh, format. There will be only three columns. We'll have the region column, we'll have the year column, and we'll have the greenhouse gas com column. Because right now, the problem is that if I were to ask you where is the greenhouse gas data, you will see it is spread across five or six or ten different uh, columns from B till I don't know how long it goes. And within that, these data exist. So ideally, it should be into this. This is the format that we will create it. Region, year, greenhouse gas emissions. So this is the first Excel sheet that we have. Uh, I just minimize it. Let's move on to the next Excel sheet. We'll try the same thing. I'll just quickly tell you. So this Excel sheet talks about uh, the historical emissions that have happened and the share. So again, the same regions. Uh, there are two different sources. Uh, one is called uh, LU, LUCA, that is basically land use and uh, land use change and forestry. So basically forest works as, as a carbon sink. So if a lot of afforestation happens, then carbon dioxide is basically taken back into the, uh, into, uh, the ground. And the FFI stands for fossil fuel and industrial emissions that happen over here. So these are the two different sources which have been looked at over here. Uh, and historically, from 1850 till 2019, what has been the share? So for Africa, this is 1.9%. Uh, for if you look at the bigger countries, uh, it will be much more. Europe is 15%, Eastern Asia is 10%. So this is basically percentages again. Uh, is this a structured or an unstructured data set right now? You can either type it or you can tell me. To me, this is unstructured. I don't know. I'm a beginner, so Perfect. But it seems uh, to be unstructured. It's structured. It is structured right now. Yes, this is structured because so um, uh, I am. Uh, what you need to understand is this is a little clumsy for human consumption because you have to scroll down. And so if I were to ask you right now how much is Africa's share, you will have to count this because this is one source, and you again have to count this. 
because this is the sorry uh, this because this is the other source from uh, where, where Africa is mentioned. However, for a computer, this is not really that big a problem. So this is basically uh, a structured data set right now. The, the third data set that we are going to use is the per capita emissions. So we've looked at the current emissions, annual greenhouse gas emissions. We have looked at the historical emissions as percentage in total. And the third is this is basically a the per capita emissions, like every individual. So if you the total emissions divided by the total population gives you the per capita emission of the same regions. So again, the two sources, FFI is fossil fuel and industries, and LU, LUCF is land use and land use change and forestry. Uh, so tons CO2 equivalent per capita. And there are some other sources as well that is mentioned over here. Uh, so is this a structured or an unstructured data set? If anybody wants to have a uh, go. Unstructured. This is an unstructured data set. Okay, perfect. This is an unstructured data set. That is also, that is in a way, yep, this is an unstructured data set. Uh, so a structured version would be like this. You have got the source, you have got the values, and you have got the region. Perfect. So uh, I'll stop over here. So these are the three data sets we're dealing with. So what we will be doing in today's session is basically we will learn how to get it into Power BI and how to edit it similar to what you would do in Excel. So we, we look at the Excel plugin of Power BI. Uh, so that is what we're going to do. So the first thing that we need to do is... Uh, perfect. So the first thing that we need to do over here is get data. So if you look at it on top, there is an option called get data. Similarly, there are there is a, a, a shortcut for Excel workbook, and there are some other popularly available data sources. Uh, it is all right if you don't know what these data sources are. I also don't know all of them. I don't know what one lake data hub is, but I know what SQL server is, and I know how to manually. So enter data is a manual way of entering data. So if you want to copy paste your data from Excel, if it's a small data set, you can also enter data. Dataverse is also there. So I will show you. So the, the first step is to get the three Excel sheets into Power BI. So how do we do that? We click on get data. So when we click on get data, it opens a, a window. Uh, so if you look at it, this is the list of different data sources from where you can get data in Power BI. Uh, usually, in my experience, you would not be using more than three, four, because that is basically where your data source would normally be. What I find important in my work, so this is a, called web. If you look at so in the web option, you can put the URL where the website exists. And you can just pull the Excel sheet from there. There is also a PDF version over here. So you can, if you have a PDF on your computer or you have a PDF online, you can basically import the PDF and work with it. Uh, the reason why I'm not using them over here is because the website and also the PDF, a lot of time goes into cleaning up the data set once you've imported it. Cleaning up effectively means that there would be structural problems, there would be hidden um, entries that would come in, blank entries that might come in, two of the columns might get merged. That might have happened to you if you have ever tried copy pasting something from Excel into a Word file or from Word file when you downloaded a, an Excel, a Word file or a copy pasted something from uh, an email to a Word. You would see that the words are broken and all. So that such formatting issues happen when you are jumping between different platforms. So with the PDF and with the with 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 with, with um, the website option, usually you have to spend a lot of time prepping the data, and uh, so uh, we are using only Excel sheets uh, for this. But we I will be uploading small videos in uh, in the module as well to take you through step by step how to import PDFs and 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 um, uh, web as well. So we want an Excel uh, uh, Excel sheet, so we click on this and we click on connect. So it asks me, where is the Excel sheet? I say that the Excel sheet exists over here. So let's pick up the first one and I click on open. So what happens now is it is trying to import it. So Power BI by default tries to look at it in terms of a table and it tries to, so when I say table, it basically means that it, it assumes that the first uh, row of each column, so the first row is basically the column header. So if you look at it, uh, it's not very important, but I'll just take you through. So over here are the two sheets that exist. This is the raw data, which basically we'll be importing. This is the sample, which I basically showed how to structure or make it unstructured. Then at the bottom, if you look at it, 
it tries to create a table. So if you use Excel, in Excel, you also again have the option of creating a table. It broadly does the same thing. It basically cleans it up on its own. Uh, I normally don't use it. Uh, I prefer starting from scratch. So when you click on it, you can see the difference over here as well if you want to have a look at it. Uh, so over here, the first column is not the header. First column is called column one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's see what it has done when it goes to the table. Uh, so it has not been able. So it, it gets it right at time, it doesn't get it right at time. But this option also exists at the bottom table. It basically has tried to make convert this into a proper table with the column uh, identifying what kind of information exists in each of the column and all. Uh, but I'm going with this, so I've just checked on this. Uh, this is the sample one that we looked at. All your sheets will come up over here. The sheet that you want to import, you just click on it. You can have multiple sheets imported as well. Now, what we need to do is, uh, at the bottom, there are two options. Uh, you either have the load option. If you click on the load option, it basically means that your data set is ready for visualization. You are ready for creating the dashboard. and uh, Everything is properly prepped and done. However, if you want to make any changes, then you click on the transform data button. Transform data, if you click on transform data, so over here, if you look at it, quickly, if you look at it, there are two, three problems. There are these null values that have come at the bottom. So there are two extra blank uh, rows that have come up. We want the column headers to be fixed. And we also know that we have to convert it into a structured data set. It is not a it is an unstructured data set right now because it is shift, uh, It is across a lot of lot many columns right now. So we click on transform data. So when you click on transform data, within Microsoft Power BI, there is a plugin called Power Query Editor. You don't have to remember the name. Power Query Editor is basically the Excel plugin within Microsoft Power BI. So things that you can do in Excel, you can do in Power BI, where you have Power Query Editor as well. So this is how it looks. I personally like this better because of a few things. First is that you cannot accidentally type things. So I'm basically clicking on these individual cells and I'm typing something on a keyboard, but nothing really changes. So if you've ever dealt with big data or if, if you've dealt with a sizable amount of data, you would know that accidentally a zero gets added or a comma gets added here or there. Or, and if you if there are six, seven people who are working on the data set uh, together, like in, within my organization, we have, uh, we have like five, six different people who have collected the data. Then by the time it comes to me, I see that spellings are all over the place. Uh, typos have been added over here and there. Dates have not been fed in properly. In this, you cannot accidentally type it. So if you want to change anything, you have to basically do a control F and replace it. You have to find it and replace it. That is one thing that I really love about this. So you would not accidentally introduce errors into this. The second thing that I like uh, is that this box over here is called applied steps. So whatever changes I will be doing to my data set, be it that I'm deleting a few rows, that I'm uh, making the first row the column headers, uh, or any other changes that I'm doing, uh, changing the type of data that exists, or I'm converting it into a structured data set, they will be added here, one after the other. So if I come back, uh, let's say a week later, I would exactly know what are the things that I've done. Similarly, if I share this ex uh, this uh, Power BI file with you, you will know exactly what Radit has done. Why is it important? If I have introduced some error midway in the sense that I've done, done some calculation and it has got the numbers all over the place, this will happen to you when you're starting off with Power BI or with any BI software for that matter. Uh, so you can basically debug or you can go back and see what are the problems or where exactly the problem might have been have corrected. So I love this applied steps. So all the steps, so right now it says source. Source means that it has imported it from some source, then some navigation has happened, and it has changed the types. So it has tried to identify what are each of the column types. So it says over here, if you look at it, it says that these are ABC, that means it's a text. Then 1.2 is it's a decimal kind of a number, and, and, and blah, and blah. So it has basically tried to identify the types, and it has assigned them. Now, this is one thing that I really love about this. Uh, the third thing that, that exists over here is uh, on the left hand side, the raw data is what it is called right now because that was the name of the sheet. You can change it to something else. So this is basically, I can double click on it and it is called GAG emissions. 
uh, and the world. I'm just keeping it uh, this way right now. So as and when we keep on adding different Excel sheets, they will keep on getting added over here. So the first one is here, then the second one will come, the third one will come, and you can basically toggle between them. You can jump between one or the other. So that is the other thing that you can do over here. So your sheets will come up over here. This looks like an Excel sheet right now over here. So this is exactly how the Excel sheet works. And over here, this applied steps is what is important. You know exactly what has been done with this. Now, another thing that I like about this Power Query Editor is you can see the blue line at the bottom. This basically tells me if there are any errors in the column. So if I hover on top of it, it tells me that there are 14 valid entries and there are four empty entries in this. If there were any errors, errors in terms of if, let's say, in a, in a number, if the column only has whole numbers, and it has got some text in it. So it will show as an error. If there is a type mismatch, data type mismatch, then there will be an error over here. So it will tell me that there are so many errors over here. In this case, we don't have errors. So you can basically, it tells you exactly how it is. So now let's look at, yeah, Siddhi, uh, you have some, any question you can ask me? You yes, uh, Rajatji, um, I am trying to understand the jargon here. Is the whole Excel sheet called a query? Um, no, so it's uh, so this is called Power Query Editor. If you look at top, it just says Power Query Editor over here. This is the name yeah. that it is called. That is all there is to it. It is the Excel interface of Power BI. Nothing more than that is important. I don't know why it is called Power Query Editor, but the, everything that you can do in Excel, you can do it over here. Okay. Does that answer it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yes. So what are the things that we need to do? We first need to remove the extra rows at the bottom. These are blank rows, and then this is just the information of what the data is all about. So we need to delete these. Let us just quickly see what are the other things that we need. Then uh, the last, thing, the other thing that we need to do is there is something called a grand total. So usually it's a good practice that you avoid any form of uh, uh, totals, averages, all of those things. These softwares are very good at it. And if you, what happens is if you accidentally keep a grand total, which is basically an addition of all of the other columns, the 30 columns or the 29 columns that we have over here, yes. What might happen is when you are creating a visual, there is a chance of double counting. So what normally you should do is you should avoid these. And while you are creating the visual, you have the option of finding an average, a mean, a more, uh, the grand total and everything else along with it. So it is a good habit to not have grand total. If you plan to keep it, this is a very personal uh, decision. You should remember to filter the grand total out if you are doing a summation. Otherwise, what will happen is the number of uh, the number over here would look 116 into 2. So it will be around 220, uh, 332. So uh, 120. So this happens and you might not remember when you're dealing with a lot of data sets. So you have to, so it's a good habit to delete this. So how do we do that? Uh, the first thing that you need to do is, and this is something that I like because your keyboard practically doesn't work in, in Power Query Editor. So I'm going on top of the uh, column and I'm right-clicking it. Most of the things that you would ever need to do, they are all available over here. So you have the option to copy, remove, uh, remove other columns, duplicate column, blah, 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 blah. You can look at all of these. Most of the commonly used options are available when you right-click. So what we need to do right now, we want to delete it. So I just right click on it and I have a remove. So the moment I click on remove, if you look at it, what happens over here is another entry has been added that the column has been removed. Let's say I have done it accidentally. I want to go back. I just click on the X and that column comes back. Uh, over here it is. So the column is back again. I just delete it again. Uh, so I just remove it. The first step is done. It's very easy if you look at it. Uh, if you look at the bottom again, there is a grand total and then there are these blank entries. So if you want to remove it, so you can see at the top, uh, keep rows and remove rows. So we click on remove rows. And if there are a few options to choose from depending on which one works best. Uh, so I want, uh, I will go with remove bottom rows right now. So remove bottom rows. It asks me how, what are the number of bottom rows that you want to be removed. I say that there are, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them, I think. So we have removed six bottom rows. 
So if we move the bottom rows at the bottom, it comes up over here. Now, in Parmier, otherwise this is good, otherwise there is no problem with this right now. Uh, if you even look at uh, the, 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 the blue uh, axis at the bottom, they show that the requirement entries and all of them are valid, and there are zero errors. So back in one second, let me just go back. I think I might have one second. This is one, two, three. No, I was good. It was perfect. Uh, I just do that again. I thought I accidentally removed one uh, column from the bottom. So I just checked it. One second, remove column, remove bottom, uh, remove row six. So now that we've done it, in Power BI, there is something called unpivoting of tables. If you've done, if you've used Excel, you know what pivoting does. It basically brings different kinds of data and it basically brings them together and shows, it, shows you the total of it. In Power BI, there is something called unpivoting of table, which is the easiest way of converting an unstructured data set into a structured data set. Uh, there are a few things that you have to always remember if you want to do that. The first is that there has to be a column header. So right now we don't have a column header. Uh, we need to have a column header. So to make the first row the column header, what you need to do is you need to go to transform, which is at the top. You from home we toggle to transform. In transform, you have the button called use first row as headers. So you just click on first row as headers. What it does is it has upgraded this to the column header. So it has basically upgraded the first row as the column header. That is all that it's done. That is the first thing that you have to remember. The second thing that you have to remember is that you cannot have multiple levels of uh, headers. Uh, I will quickly show you an example of what that means. And uh, we don't have to here one second. I think we might have it in this one. Uh, yeah. So if you remember, we started out with this. Uh, one second, I'll just zoom in. Yeah. So over here, if you look at it, there are two levels of header. One is the 2009 to 11, which is basically the year. So it is basically structured in two levels. This is the first level, and this is the second level. If you have any data set which is like this, something then nested within it another layer, you cannot convert it natively. So if you look at it, what we have done over here is we have transformed it into a single layer again. Uh, and all data sets can be converted into a single layer. You just have to apply a little bit of brain initially. Later on, it comes to you naturally. So now that has been changed. So this is something that you need to keep in mind when you're dealing with it, how to convert it. So over here, we don't have that problem. So now what we need to do, and this is the reason why I love Power BI as well, I just, with using shift, I am just, I'm clicking on top of these. So all of the other columns are highlighted because the first column is already structured because region only has regions within it. It is not spread across other places. So I have not selected this, I've selected the others and I just right click on it. And there is an option called unpivot columns, which basically comes over here, unpivot columns. So I just right click on it and I just click on unpivot columns. Uh, sir, I think when you're right clicking, the right click pop-up is not visible. Is it visible to now it's visible? Huh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm just right clicking. It has all the options that usually are there, like copy, remove columns and all of those things. So within that, there is an option to unpivot columns. So this is the option that I went with. So the moment I unpivoted the column, if you look at it in one straight go, it has been converted into a, a structured data set. So from top to bottom, you can see all of the different regions and the years along with it and the values that go along with it. So you can put here and then you have the, this was and we'll, so I'm just double clicking on it to change the names, GAG emissions. So we have created a structured data set out of an unstructured data set. And now we are good to go. So what we're done with this, you have to close it. So you go on top. Oh, hi, hi, Rajit. Uh, yeah, uh, can, can, I, can I ask something? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so in region, there is alphabet. ABC means that is alpha no, al alphabet, right? Okay. And uh, if you are scrolling towards the, uh, uh, like the column one point, is it mean by the, this is numeric value? The cell have contained the all numeric value? Uh, you're talking about the year column right now? 
न्यूमेरिक वैल्यू while the year this is a again it it should be either it it, it should be either numeric value or it, it it would be the alphabet abc uh so uh, there are so the, with numbers uh, with the year it, it depends on how you want to go about uh, in so uh, we we'll just uh, talk about this a little bit in detail the reason why i have kept it as as as, as a number as, as an alphabet right now is because it doesn't make any difference so i wanted to pick up as 1990 as a unique uh, year there are two three ways of handling it this might not be the best way of going about but for the visualization it will take 1990 as a unique 1991 as a unique 1992 as a unique that's not matter whether it is a number or a, a, an alphabet because we are not adding them up in any way we would not be doing any form of uh, operations on top of it uh, what they normally say is the best way of going about is converting it into a date type what it does is when you convert it into a date type it basically picks up first of january for that year so ideally what you should do is you might change want to convert it into a date type remembering that it is basically the first of that year yeah 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 got so, it but it really doesn't matter uh, as long as you know what you are taking so it's a decision that you take there is no right answer to that what you pointed out makes sense why would you want to keep uh, a year which is a number in, as 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 a rough bit uh, right so you can convert it into this let's keep it this way then we we'll keep it uh, we'll change the other x and sheets as well because okay. uh, It would not make any difference over there. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so uh, then we click on. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Can you please repeat the last last step? Uh, the last step, Doctor. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. We will be sharing the video as well. So uh, you can go through it. Otherwise, the next Excel sheet that we are importing, we'll do the same thing again over there. I, I, okay. I'll, okay. Talk about that. Fine. Okay. Because I clicked on uh, save, so I just saved and applied. So once you have saved everything in Power Query Editor, it gets saved and it comes into Power BI right now. So it takes a little while depending on how good or bad your computer speed is. Uh, it is there. So what has now happened is, if you look on your uh, right, this Excel sheet has come up over here. So now I can create visuals using this GHG emission annual. And you can click on this. And the reason why why we were stressing so much about converting an unstructured data set into a structured data set is because the column names come up over here. Had we not done it, we would have had uh, many columns over here, starting from 1990 to 1991, 1992, 3, 4, and all the years till about 2019. So now all of them have been have been combined into a year. Option over here, so that is the convenience. And of this that step actually, uh, by which you uh, converted uh, the years into uh, into a single column. I missed that step actually. I will I will show it in the next. I will show it in the next section. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So now we're done with this. Let's get the next data set. Let's do it a little differently. Let's click on this button now. Excel worksheet, and let's pick up the next one. Let's see what is there in this one. We clicked on it, and it shows. It looks fine, except for these empty entries at the bottom. Yeah, so, so we just need to. Yeah, please. Sorry. So when you also see the comments in the chat box, so can we repeat the steps one second in this in the chat room? Or? Right now. So I am talking about this right now. Are we? Are they new? Uh, no. Um, see. Okay. Now, now we had struggle right at the beginning. There was some problem with the with the way things were moving. So yeah. So we click on this. And then we click on transform data just because we have to remove the blank uh, blank rows at the bottom. Otherwise, this looks structured, so we don't have to do unpivoting over here. And we wait for Power Query Editor to open. And oh, yeah. and at the bottom, we need one uh, one second. The last three to be removed. So one, two, three. These three need to be removed. So I again go on top. 
and I go to remove rows, remove bottom rows, and I put three, and I click on enter. So this is done. Okay, over here we don't really need to change it to here. Anyways, I'll, I'll show that as well once. Uh, so we're done with this otherwise. Uh, the good thing is, if you look at over here, whatever we did, so both the Excel sheets are available over here, and you can talk about it. Please yes. show the whole window. Now. You are too much zoomed, so we are not able to uh, get where you are moving. Okay. okay. Please show the full, uh, full window so that you know we will have okay. a glance of what's happening. Perfect. Thank you. The full window is available. Uh, full window is actually seen. I, I it is. I will not zoom in for the time being. Yeah, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm talking between these two. So uh, what the person had asked, and this is basically what I was talking about, uh, you can see the changes that you've done. Can you see the full screen now? Can I, I, I think you have to be Yes. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Amit. Yeah, so what I did in the last time was I changed the, so if you want to change the column type, so these are the types that exist in Power BI. Decimal, fixed decimal number, uh, whole numbers, percentage, blind, 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 blind. So we change it to date. Not date and time, but date. So that is basically what I clicked. So I clicked on date and it got changed over here. What happens when you put it into date column is basically in, in a date format is it picks up the first. So if you only have year written over there, like it's written 2024. So when you convert it into a date format, it picks up 1st of January 2024. If you had the entire thing, like there is a date entry for 1st of January, 2nd of January, 3rd of January, 4th of January, then obviously there is not a problem. However, if you remember in our Excel sheet, we started with just the year. So when we convert it into a date format, it picks up the 1st of that. So if you look at all the numbers over here, they are basically 1st of January, 1010119. 1st of January 1990, 1st of January 1991, 92, and so on and so forth. So this is just something that you have to remember, or you really don't have to remember because it does not really make any difference uh, in the way we are going to do the visualization. So that is basically what we did. So what we did was we clicked on the date and we changed it to a date type. Earlier it was showing as uh, ABC as a text format. That is the only thing that we did. So uh, then you can click on close and apply because we've done this and we wait for the third uh, Excel sheet to be imported as well. Now the third Excel sheet, uh, and this is something as a data analyst, when you data, are you analyzing the data, I would not call you data analyst because that is what I was about to say. But when you're analyzing data, there are different calls that you have to make, like deciding whether the year should be a text input or a, a date input or a number input. Similarly, or whether you want to keep the grand total or the averages, or you don't want to keep the average of the grand total. Similarly, over here, you will take a choice, a conscious choice, in terms of how you want to go about. So we're just loading the last uh, Excel sheet. And we've got the last Excel sheet over here. So I just I checked on the box. I've selected it. And I click on Transform Data. And uh, again, the Power Query Editor would open up. The Power Query Editor is over here. I just quickly first uh, remove the, uh, the, the, the unnecessary rows at the bottom because we don't need them. There are four in total. So I'm just, sorry, uh, remove bottom rows. And I'm done. So now there are two ways of going about. One is that we can unpivot this. So I just click on all these three and I right click it and I can click on unpivot columns. And when I click on unpivot column, it becomes a it becomes a structured data set. That is one thing that we can do. There's another thing that we can also do, and this is basically a personal choice. Uh, what we actually want to talk about eventually is the per capita emission of these uh, different regions. So what I can do is I can create a, a fourth column. Let me just jump onto the Excel sheet over here, right? So this is basically what it is. So I can create a fourth column called total. And I can basically add these three up and I can put the number over here. So whatever is the addition, around 18 over here and 13 over here. So you basically can create that and then I can basically remove these three. So there is, this is another way of going about. So one is that I can unpivot it, which is basically what I just did. 
The other is I can just add it up. I'll just show you how to create a new column. That is also something new that we we'll learn. So if you want to create a new column, so how do we do that? So we are basically adding these up. So what we do is at the top, if you look at it, uh, there is a tab called add column. So we click on this add column option. So when you go click on the add column, there are three options to choose from. Columns from examples, column custom column, invoke custom column function. Uh, you, usually you wouldn't want to use custom column, you can do everything over there. There are some templates or examples that are already there that you can uh, click on custom column from examples to check it out. So when you click on custom column, a new table, a new box opens up. At the top is basically you new column name, whatever is the name that you want to give. And on the right hand side, if you see, all the columns that exist in the table, they are visible. So there are three columns that exist over there. These are the text, these are the number columns that are showing right now. Because, so these are the, they, all the columns are showing, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm my bad. The region is basically highlighted in a different way. All the columns, the four columns are visible over here. So what I want to do is, I am saying that total per capita emissions. So I'm changing it to total per capita emissions. That is the name of the column. And over here, what I do is I say I want this to be added. So I click on, I just do plus. Then I click on the next one. And then I say plus. And then I click on the last one. Similarly, for minus, for anything else that you want to do, you can do that. And if you look at the bottom, uh, you have it says that no syntax error was detected. If you if you if I just remove any of these again, if I do something wrong, it says that token little expected or any other error that comes up, it basically shows that. So every all the options come up over here. So you've just added it up over here. This is like the basic thing that we can possibly do. We've just added three columns and I click on OK. So when I click on OK, it has basically created a new column called total per capita emissions. So what I'll do now is now for my visualization. Uh, because we've seen the end result as well, and this is the personal call that we would take. In the end result, I only use, uh, so th this is basically what the end result, uh, this is the dashboard that we're trying to create, right? This is the end result. Over here, I do not have the breakup in terms of the different sources of per capita emissions. I'm using, using the total. So because I'm using the total, what I can do right now is, I can just delete the extra columns. Why would you want to do it? Uh, you would want to do it if you are dealing with big sets of data. Then, depending on how much raw data you have, your model might become slightly slow or slightly fast. So it is a good idea to remove these columns. Right now, it doesn't make any difference because there are only 10 entries over here. But let's say you have 10 million entries over here. Then, the extra columns would slow down your, your, your uh, uh, dashboard. So that is basically what it is. So all the three are available over here. So you come to home, you click on close and apply. And once you click on close and apply, it closes down and your power, power BI, it just takes a while for it to load. So it, it asks, and it is loading. Uh, the last thing that you need to remember right now is, uh, so if you look at it, all the three sheets are now available over here on our right hand side. If I want to, if I remember, oh, I forgot to do something. So if you want to go back to Power Query Editor, this is the button where it is written Transform Data. The moment you click on Transform Data, it takes you back to Power Query Editor. So if you've forgotten any steps and you want to go back and change anything, you click on that and it takes you back to Power Query Editor. So this is how you go back to the Power Query Editor at any given point in time. So while you're creating the visualization, you might realize, okay, the data type is not correct. So you can just click on Transform Data, go back to Power Query Editor, and make those amendments over there. Once we're done with this, let's we just save this file. So you click on File, you click on Save As, and on Desktop, let's create it. One second. Uh, so it says enter the file name. Let's say. Uh, test file is what I'm saving it as. So, Power Query files have a PBIX file extension. 
so the way Word has dot doc or dot docx or Excel has XLS. Similarly, Power Query files have dot .tbix file. So it's called test file. I, I'm sorry, I accidentally closed it. I just save it again. Uh, save as test file tbix, and I'm saying it has to be saved in desktop. And I click on save. Why I'm saving it? Because we'll stop over here. And in the next live session, we'll start the visualization bit. So what we've done is we've learned how to clean up the raw data and convert it into an into 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 a structured data set. So if you look at over here, this is the test file that has been created. This is how a Power BI file looks. So this is the PBIX file that we have over here, the test file. So you just do that and you can stop over here. Uh, I'll just stop it over here. If you have any questions, queries right now, you can ask me. We've got to 10 minutes left. Otherwise, you can wind up for the day. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I am Ravi Kant. Uh, I have yeah. one question. Yeah. So, yeah. in terms of deleting row, so if I want to delete only one row in between, then how can I delete? Like you are putting the number from down from bottom. I can delete three or four rows, but if I want to delete some row from so, the between, the drop down option. So there, there is an option to identify what row. So between, so column between uh, row six and row eight. You can actually put that in between option also comes up over there. So okay. there will be two options. There are remove only the errors. So if there are blank or there are errors, they remove that top, bottom, and also in between in the middle. So you have those options when you click on the drop down over there. Okay. Sir, can you can you please show if possible? I'll just show you. Please Thank show. you. Okay, there is alternate, there is. Okay, okay, there is alternate rows. I will also have to check it out. And so you can keep a range of rows over here. So I go by these, uh, Ravi. Uh, keep a range of rows. I'll split it down over here. Earlier they had that option. So Fabia eventually, so every month it comes up with an update. Yeah. Uh, they might have removed it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll keep the rows and I'll keep the rows that I want to keep and upper niche wale, the, the, the ones that is above or between, I'll remove them. Does that make sense, Ran? Yes, I think uh, I need to try to if okay. like I'm having any problem then I guess I also once I go back so earlier they had that uh, range option in this yeah, now they have removed it for some funny reason I don't know so they might have kept it somewhere else I'll also check it up uh, they they might have put it somewhere else so every month Pavi comes up with an update and they keep on changing the the the, the outlook a little bit or they they, they lay out a little bit so they had an option to do that so they have the alternate rows option. But that does not really solve your purpose. You want to right. do some rows in the middle. Mm. So I would keep the rows. That is how I would go about right now. Mm. That is the easy answer. Yes. Okay, thank you. I think at the time of uh, when we are tracking the uh, data, we need to check the blank column and then we can. Yeah. I do that. There is a question okay, from Sharkar. Yeah. Uh, can you put the line the breakup? Yeah, we can do anything. So we'll talk about the visualizations. Uh, what I have time to say is that yeah. you have a dashboard. Uh, the can be part of filters. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that. You can do that. Any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so, uh, can we install uh, this uh, software on Windows 8? I, I don't think there would be a problem. We can just go to the Microsoft Store and see if it if it done. I have. I was trying, but I was not able to actually. There was some error uh, coming in while I was trying to install it, but I was able to install it in uh, Windows 11 Pro. So I was wondering whether Windows 8 is supporting this or not. I am not aware. I have to check and get back to you on that. But if you are not able to install it, it's safe to assume it is not. I am not <laughs> sure about that. No, did not have never tried it. I'll check it up under the video. Oh, thank you, sir. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, so I'll wind it up over here. Uh, the next live session, we'll take it up from here and we'll start the visualization bit, which is the exciting bit. And, 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 and we'll take it forward from there. Thanks a lot for joining in today. Uh, we'll be sharing the live recording um, uh, shortly, I think by tonight or early tomorrow morning.
Thanks.